Okay, so welcome to the final video on uh, this uh, problem involving the chicken and her eggs hatching. Okay, uh, so uh, in the previous video what we calculated was that uh, the pro joint probability um, uh, pro probability mass function that big X is equal to little x and big Y is equal to little y. And remember that these random variables, big X is the random variable uh, that little e that um, a certain number of the certain number of the eggs that the chicken ha uh, lays will hatch, and big Y is the uh, random variable which assigns to each outcome how many of the eggs that the chicken laid did not hatch, is equal uh, to x plus y. Uh, choose x uh, times p to the x q to the y e to the negative lambda, lambda to the x plus y, over x plus y factorial, uh, was what we got. And the way that we got that was uh, using the conditional probability uh, that um, you get this number, uh, that x of them hatch and y of them don't hatch, given that the chicken lays n eggs, uh, well, which is x plus y, given that the chicken lays x plus y eggs, times the probability that she lays uh, x plus y eggs in the first place. And we also got that the marginal probability distribution of x as a function of the two x was given by this great big sum from n is equal to 0 uh, to infinity, n choose x, uh, p to the x, q to the n minus x, uh, times e to the negative lambda, lambda to the n, over n factorial. And the way that we got this was through the law of total probability. We said that's condition on knowing the number of eggs. This is the probability that x of them hatch if she lays a certain little n of eggs. This is the probability that she actually lays those that little n, uh, little n eggs. And then we sum over every possible value that little n can take on. And that gives us overall the probability that big X is equal to little x. But note something, that we could in fact start this sum from a low and, uh, from a different number because if we are asking what is the probability that little x of them hatch, then what if, why are we starting at n is equal to zero? If the chicken lays no eggs at all, then how can little x hatch? Well, that, that the probability must be zero. And the way that uh, we get round that is the fact that this n choose x, uh, if n is equal to 0 and x is, say, 5. 0 choose 5, we just by definition say that that's going to be 0, so it doesn't screw up the sum. Uh, but we might as well start this sum from n is equal to x rather than n is equal to y. Okay, and now the marginal PDF of uh, the random variable y, uh, which is the random variable assigning to each outcome how many of the eggs that the chicken laid did not hatch, it we found was equal to the sum uh, from n is equal to 0 uh, to infinity of n choose n minus y times uh, p to the n minus y q to the y e to the negative lambda lambda to the n over n factorial and again the way that we got this was by saying okay if she that's conditioned on the number of eggs that she hatches that say she hatches uh, a little n eggs this is the probability here the conditional probability that little y of them do not hatch given that she laid n, a little n eggs now let's scale it back up to the whole probability space by uh, multiplying by the actual probability that she did delay the to n eggs and then let's sum over every possible value of the to n but again, it's impossible that uh, she didn't that she laid. Uh, let's say little n is equal to zero eggs. She laid no eggs, and then let's say five of them did not hatch. That's not possible. So again, you could start this summation from y, um, from y eggs rather than um, from um, uh, from zero eggs. Okay. Uh, so uh, if we uh, now now what we want to do is prove that these two uh, random variables are independent, and the formula for that. And the way that we're going to show that is by showing that this joint PMF, the probability that big X is equal to little x and big Y is equal to little y, is actually equal to the product of these marginal PMFs, uh, the probability that big X is equal to some little x times the probability that big Y is equal to some little y. Now, uh, before we can do that, we could just brute force, stick this in, and we'd get some horrendous double sum, double infinite sums, and we're not going to do that, basically. Instead, what we're going to do is firstly analyse these and reduce them down to something much prettier. Okay, so the probability that big X is equal to the little x, the marginal PMF uh, for big X, uh, is equal to this sum from 
n is equal to, this one is equal to x to infinity. Now let's expand what n choose x is. Now that we're summing just from uh, x, we can expand this as n factorial over x factorial, n minus x factorial. We wouldn't have been able to uh, expand that if we were summing from n is equal to 0, because then uh, this is just defined to be 0 whenever uh, the bottom number here, x, is greater than the top number, n. Okay, and then we multiply this by p to the x, q to the n minus x times e to the negative lambda, lambda to the n over n factorial. Well, there are quite a few bits that don't play any part in this sum. So all these things like x factorial, p to the x, uh, q to the negative x, we can pull that into uh, this part into q to the n, q to the negative x, and we can pull out the q to the negative x. And this e to the negative lambda, they don't play any part in the sum. So let's pull them all out. So we've got p to the x, and then we've got q to the negative x from here. And then we've got e to the negative lambda, or, and we've got x factorial on the bottom there. And now what we've got is the sum from n is equal to x to infinity. And this n factorial here cancels with this n factorial here, so we'll get rid of those. And overall, what we're left with is q to the n, uh, lambda to the n, so we've got q to the n from there, uh, e lambda to the n from there, and then we've got over n minus x factorial. Okay, so let's do a change of variable here. Let's say uh, this is equal to p to the x, q to the negative x, e to the negative lambda over x factorial. If we were to write this out, what we've got is, let's start, n is equal to x, we've got q to the x, lambda to the x over 0 factorial. Then we've got plus q to the x plus 1, lambda to the x plus 1 over 1 factorial. And then we've got plus uh, q to the x plus 2, uh, lambda to the x plus 2, over 2 factorial. So it's screaming. This is so close to e, uh, the uh, uh, Taylor expansion for e to the x. It's screaming for you to uh, do something with the Taylor expansion for x. The problem is that these powers don't match the um, factorial. So what we can do to resolve that is factor out q to the x, lambda to the x. So we'll pull out q to the x, lambda to the x. So we've got this stuff all at the front so far. And now what we're going to do is pull out q to the x, lambda to the x. And we'll get that this is what, uh, well, it's q, um, q to the 0, lambda to the 0, over 0 factorial, plus q to the 1, lambda to the 1, over 1 factorial, plus q to the 2, lambda to the 2, over 2 factorial, etc. And it goes on and on and on. And it is, in fact, the Taylor expansion for q lambda, e to the q lambda, rather. Okay, and also notice here that the q to the negative x and the q to the x that we've just pulled out cancel with one another. Okay, so we've got, so far, we've got p to the x, e to the negative lambda, lambda to the x over x factorial, and we're agreeing that this is now equal to e to the q lambda. Okay, and if you wanted to do that more formally, rather than just, you know, writing it out, I think that this is more intuitive, but if you wanted to do it for more formally, you'd say, let's change the variable here, and let's sum from r over r, and let's define r to be equal to n minus x, and you'd do a change of variable, so you'd say that sum from r is equal to 0 to infinity, um, um, Wait, is that right? Um, uh, I, r is equal to m minus x. We were summing from x, so we're going to that r equal... Yes, yes, that's fine. Uh, yes, so we'd sum from r is equal to 0 to infinity, and then we'd replace n here with r plus x, and we'd replace lambda here with r plus x, and we'd replace m minus x with r, and then what we'd end up with, uh, we'd pull out the q lambda to the power of x, and we'd end up with q lambda to the power of r over r factorial summed over all r. Uh, so we'd get it that way. Okay, so... Uh, now let's uh, do a bit of cancelling here. Uh, firstly, we can pull the lambda and the p together. So this p to the x and the lambda to the x, we'll say that that is lambda p to the x. And then over here, we can put this, these two together, and we'll get e to the negative lambda. Um, and then we get 1 minus q. But 1 minus q is what we were calling p. Uh, so, and then we've got over x factorial. Uh, so let's rewrite this as p lambda to the x, uh, e to the negative p lambda over x factorial. So what we discover from this is that the PMF of x has exactly the PMF of a binomial distribution. So we discover that the big random variable x is actually Poisson distributed with parameter p times lambda. So uh, that's exactly what you'd expect. The chicken lays, the chicken lays uh, on average lambda eggs, the probability of the eggs hatching each one by one is p. How many do you expect to, um, 
how many do you expect to hatch? You'd expect to hatch P lambda. What you don't know, so that's that's obviously the expected value, but what you don't know, what what's mysterious is why it's Poissonly distributed, but we have shown that it reduces to a Poisson distribution. Okay, so that is a much simpler formula, a much simpler formula for the PMF of X uh, to plug in uh, to this formula up here later on. So now what we want to do is do the same thing for this PMF of Y. Okay, so let's take this PMF of Y and uh, do a similar manipulation. So we know that the probability that big Y is equal to some little y is equal to the sum, uh, n is equal to zero to infinity, uh, n choose n minus y, uh, p to the n minus y, and we'd agreed, sorry, we'd agreed that we were only summing from n is equal to y to infinity now, uh, p to the n minus y, uh, q to the y, e to the negative lambda, lambda to the n, over n factorial. And again, what we can start off with is, firstly, we can now, now that we're summing only from n is equal to y onwards, we can uh, we can split this up into uh, n factorial over n minus y factorial t uh, times n minus n minus y factorial, uh, which is just y factorial there. Okay, uh, so this is times p to the n minus y, q to the y, e to the negative lambda, lambda to the n, over n factorial. So this is just equal to y factorial here. The n factorial here and the n factorial there cancel. We're going to pull, uh, we want to pull lots of things that aren't involved in the summation out. And one of the things we can split is this into p to the n, p to the negative n. So now let's pull lots of things out. We're going to pull out, firstly, we're going to pull out p to the negative y. Then we're going to pull out q to the y. We're going to pull out e to the negative lambda. And we're going to pull out that y factorial. Okay, and then we get the sum from n is equal to y uh, to infinity of what do we have left? We have this p to the n over here. We have uh, lambda to the n, so we could put those together if you like. Uh, so we've got p to the n, lambda to the n, and then we've got this n minus y factorial. So in this time, this time we'll do it more formally. We'll say let r equal n minus y. So this summation is effectively the sum from r is equal to 0 to stick in n is equal to infinity minus some constant y, you still sum it up to infinity, of uh, p to the, now we're going to replace the n by um, r plus y, and then we're going to replace lambda to the r plus y as well, so we're replacing lambda at n with r plus y, and then we're going to do it all divided by n minus y factorial, and you've still got all of this thing in out the front. P to the negative y, q to the y, e to the negative lambda over y factorial. Okay, up we go. Right, uh, so now, um, if we pull out the p to the y and the lambda to the y, uh, we get p to the negative y, q to the y, e to the negative lambda over y factorial times these new friends, uh, p to the y, lambda to the y, and then we've got the sum r is equal to 0 to infinity, oh sorry, n minus y of here down here of course should have been converted to what r, that was the whole point of defining r to be equal to n minus y. Uh, so we get that this is p lambda to the power of r over r factorial and that is exactly the um, Taylor expansion for e to the p lambda, which is valid for all real numbers, so we don't need to worry about convergence. Uh, real analysis have already proven this for us. Okay, so we can cancel the p to the negative y and the p to the y. Uh, then we'll combine the lambda and the q and get q lambda to the power of y. We'll then combine the e to the negative lambda with the e to the p lambda and get e to the negative lambda 1 minus p over y factorial. But 1 minus p is q, so we can rewrite this as uh, e to the negative q lambda, q lambda to the y over y factorial, which is exactly the PMF of another Poisson distribution. So we get that y is Poissonly distributed. Again, the exact expected value we'd expect, which is q lambda. Uh, because if the hen lays, uh, on average, lambda eggs, and on average, uh, well, and uh, a single egg has the chance of not hatching q, then the total number you'd expect not to hatch is q lambda. Uh, what's again the shocker is that it is perfectly Poissonly distributed. Okay, so now uh, we have the probability mass function of x, is it that x is equal to x is equal to e uh, to the negative p lambda, uh, p lambda to the x over x factorial, and we have the probability mass function of y 
being equal to little y is equal to e to the negative q lambda q lambda to the y over y factorial. So if we multiply these together, the probability that big X is equal to little x times the probability that big Y is equal to little y is equal to e to the negative p lambda, uh, p lambda to the x over x factorial at times e to the negative q lambda, q lambda to the y over y factorial. Now, uh, just to remind you, the joint uh, PMF uh, for these two, the joint PMF, the probability that x was equal to little x and y was equal to little y, was equal to x plus y choose little x times p to the x uh, lambda to the y e to the negative lambda lambda to the x plus y divided by x plus y factorial. So wouldn't it be nice uh, if we want to prove they're independent, we need to prove that this is equal to this. Okay, so firstly, let's combine, uh, that, so taking this thing here, let's combine uh, the two exponentials. So on the two exponentials, we get e to the negative p, um, sorry, we get e to the negative lambda p plus q. So if we're combining this exponential with this exponential, we get e to the negative lambda p plus q, uh, plus q, but p plus q is just equal to 1. So this just becomes e to the negative lambda. So that's matching this bit here. Now if we split up these, we get p to the x, lambda to the x. Split up this one, we get q to the y, lambda to the y, and overall we've got over x factorial times y factorial. So p to the x matches, let me get some colourful pens. Um, this, uh, this exponential, e to the negative y, perfectly matches this bit here. The p to the x matches this bit. The p to, uh, lambda to the x matches up here, where we've got lambda to the x plus lambda y. And the qy matches this bit. All we need to make sure is that x plus y choose x. What, all we need to make sure is that x plus y choose x uh, divided by this bit over here, 1 over x plus y factorial is in fact equal to what we've got over here, which is x factorial, uh, y factorial, rather 1 over that. Okay, so that's all that we've got left to do. And we need some more paper in this last bit of the video. We have to start a new piece of paper. Okay, um, right. Uh, so if we want to prove that, uh, let's just expand what x plus y choose x is. It's x plus y factorial divided by uh, x factorial, x plus y minus x factorial and uh, we are multiplying that by 1 over x plus y factorial okay so the x plus y factorials cancel x plus y minus x factorial is just equal to y factorial so indeed this is just equal to 1 over x factorial 1 over y factorial. Uh, so that is how uh, you prove that those two random variables, uh, namely the number of eggs that hatch and the number of eggs that don't hatch, are perfectly independent, providing uh, you don't know the total number of eggs that the chicken hatched, and providing, in fact, it's crucial that the number of the eggs the chicken uh, lays, rather, sorry, not the number of eggs the chicken hatches, the number of eggs the chicken lays uh, is uh, perfectly Poisson distributed, i.e. if it's not distributed Poissonly, uh, you won't get this scenario.